So hello, um, my name is Laura O'Leary and I'm the Assistant Curator at Quad in Derby. And today I'll be speaking with photographer Caleb Fung about his work. But for those who haven't visited us before, Quad is an international centre for the engagement in contemporary art and film, focusing on major exhibitions, professional practice for artists, independent film and the creative use of emergent digital technologies. Quad also organises a format international photography festival, the UK's leading festival of photography and related media. Format organises a year-round programme of international commissions, open calls, residencies, conferences and collaborations in the UK and internationally and welcomes over 100,000 visitors from all over the world to its biennial. So we are currently in our off-year programme that was planned to be launched during the UK's lockdown period that's due to COVID-19. So like many other cultural organisations, we are sharing things digitally in the interim. For example, Caleb Fung has been taking over our format Instagram page this week and will be speaking with us today. I'm really pleased to be speaking with Caleb as we had planned for him to visit us for the launch of our format off-year programme, which has been postponed, as he was awarded the WMA Format Fellowship which is a professional development opportunity. The WMA, format, the WMA Fellowship is part of WMA's development programme that aims to spark discussions of social issues of great importance to Hong Kong through visual images with a view to fostering positive change. Each year, WMA selects a theme for their programme and the 2019-20 theme was light. Caleb was selected for his series of work, Glory 503, where he has re-documented the 2019 Hong Kong protests by using everyday materials such as cotton and water to recreate moments from the demonstrations. His fictional constructions are visually attractive, where weapons, tear gas and laser beams appear as symbols of protests, offering an alternative and reflective insight into the movement in Hong Kong. So from here, I will pass over to Caleb, who will discuss his work, and we'll have some questions at the end. Okay, thank you, Laura, for the introduction. So, so I would like to talk a bit more about my series, um, the Glory 503. Perhaps I should share my screen right here. All right. Um, I think some of the symbols are uh, quite universal in, in my body of work and can be easy to easily recognized, but some of them might need a bit of an, of an explanation and background story in order to have a, a better understanding. So um, the title of the project, um, the glory part is inspired by the Cantonese uh, march, the glory to Hong Kong, which is rightly, uh, widely adopted as the anthem of the protest. And some even call it the national anthem of Hong Kong. And um, the word glory in Cantonese also uh, partially means light, which echoed with um, the WMA theme of the year, and also uh, light is also a, a main element of the body of work. And um, 503 is the number of the extradition bill on the legal documents. So the title of the work kind of already tells my, my standpoint, and I think it's a good, good sum up of the, the work. And for myself during the movement life is really depressing and i wanted to do something as a photographer or as an individual but uh, in the be beginning i tried to shoot something on the streets and i don't i just didn't feel right as i'm not um, a photojournalist and i feel like i'm not the most legitimate person to take photos in the in the scenes and um, also people are really sensitive to cameras and also um, as a participant in the rally, the, the identity of myself is really not a photographer for, my, for myself, I mean. And so I barely took any photographs and, <laughs> and it just didn't feel right. So after a while, instead of taking photos on the streets, I came up with the idea of reconstructing some symbols and moments of the movement. So um, I picked some everyday objects and then they kind of echo with the new everyday life we have facing facing the, the the police or the government and then um, all the conflicts and injustice. For instance, the first image here is the riot police, and um, I think it's the most profound and kind of terrifying image for myself. And even on the news, the image 
images of the riot police um, is all, all over the places. They are shouting and pointing their torches towards the reporters. And every, every time we, we turn on the news, it's just a close up of a police and, and, and yeah, and chaos. And they cover their faces with reflective material, which makes them even more terrifying. And then um, in certain extent, less, less humane. And I think the approach of using the objects to reconstruct the image instead of like taking a real photograph of the police is kind of let, um, let myself have a sense of security when approaching the subject. Because um, for, the, for the image, it's actually a light dome for a flash and then a rubber ball and then just a little LED torch. But it's, it's quite the image of the police as you can see the outcome. It's, I think it's quite, quite profound, but I, I didn't have to really face and confront the real actual thing, which is the police. <laughs> and that's why I picked this approach. Um, the second image is the baton. It's also another iconic symbol of the um, of pol pro police brutality, and um, we see them all the time. And it's actually a wooden chopstick. <laughs> so um, we use them every night uh, at dinner. <laughs> so yeah, it's an image of the baton, and then. The next one is the tear gas, and it's actually some cotton. And then this one is the pepper spray, which we also see most of the time. And then the the white foamy part really look really looks like the the pepper spray, spray but it's actually just water. And then it is a, a, just a normal water bottle for watering plants and. Yeah, we see them all the time, unfortunately. I mean, the pepper spray. And this one is a sponge grenade, another weapon of the police. And then this, this one is the mobile lights, which um, we usually see them in assemblies at nighttime, used by the protesters. Oops, and this one is the police siren. And then I think many of us got very sensitive to the sound and the light of it during the, um, the time in 2019. And then it's actually the uh, toilet paper tube and then some cleaning sponge. And for this one, I think this one is more um, recognizable for Hong Kongers. It's actually the Hong Kong's airport evacuation, that's how we call it. <laughs> It's, it's an incident happened last year where thousands of protesters gathered at the Hong Kong International Airport in an attempt to paralyze the airport. But however, the airport is actually located 35 kilometers away from the downtown. And then as the police started to make arrests, people decided to make their way back on foot along the, the highway. <laughs> so after that, hundreds of private vehicles come to the rescue. And then some call it the, the Dunkirk evacuation of Hong Kong. <laughs> so what you see are the, are the uh, uh, I mean, in the real thing, they are the backlights of vehicles. And this one is the lime rock with a laser beam, which is another iconic incident that happened last year during the mid-autumn festival. And then it's, um, it's a movement inspired by the Baltic Way in 1989. And then the protesters form a human chain from the city and then all the way up to the Lime Rock and shining their laser pen and sing, singing and belting out slogans. And these are some photos from the media about the, the protest that night. And the Lime Rock is actually a iconic totem for Hong Kongers. It's a, kind of a symbol of the city's resilience and spirit starting from the 70s. And um, I think the incident is like giving it another meaning and values on top of that. And this one is uh, 
the Hong Kong Space Museum with a laser touch. And which is another incident happened last year, which um, people gathered in front of the Space Museum of Hong Kong. So here's a, a photo of the Space Museum of Hong Kong. And many of us um, think it, it looks like uh, the melon, watermelon, uh, I mean, the pineapple bread in Hong Kong, which is a kind of an, an authentic food. And then uh, people gather in front of the museum supporting a student who is arrested because of um, carrying some laser pens on him and then later accused owning offensive weapon. And this is um, the, the, <laughs> the bread with the, the laser touch. I think that kind of is um, my brief inter introduction of my work and then about the protests. Do you want to um, share any more of your other work? Would yeah, you of like course. Yeah. I, I can. I can. <laughs> I can share some of my previous work before we, yeah, Great. discuss. And I can share two of my personal projects about my own home um, I've done before, and then this one is um, actually my graduation project uh, in uni. And it's about my family crisis. So back then, my, my family was experiencing a crisis, obviously, uh, between my parents. And then my mother moved back to the apartment where my grandma used to live in. And then um, she, lived, she, she lived with my sister. And then I lived with my father at our old apartment. And then I'm the only one in the family who can move back and forth between my parents. Um, be, and having both um, maintaining relationship with them. And then for me, the home was really emotionally overwhelming. And then um, I kind of uh, hide behind the camera and <laughs> started to take photographs. And these images are portraits of my family. So this is my mother, and then this is myself with my dog. And this is my sister, and then this is my father. Um, I think they, they seem connected, but yet separated. And then through the process of photography, I kind of, and, and working in the dark room, I kind of cope with the, the depression. And then it's like forcing myself to print over and over again, to look at the, the portraits over and over again. And it's kind of therapeutic for myself, I think. And, um, it was kind of my therapy session back then. And then this one is um, a family collage, which I found in my grandma's pl place. And then I think it's kind of sarcastic with all the, um, with the wedding photograph of my parents and then all the family members. And I kind of pr um, print them out and then realign them. So they look like they're in one frame, but they're actually kind of misaligned. And this is a view around my home. And then this is actually the setup in, um, in my graduation show. So I put, put all the family members back together <laughs> sarcastically and then the family collage next to it. And the next, uh, the next project on the same topic is um, happened in 2018. It's another WMA contest. And um, at that time I moved back to the apartment where all of us used to live in. And then there was only my mother and I living in it. And then um, I kind of found this, I found this um, family portrait in the middle of the, the living room. And it kind of kind of bothers me <laughs> with, with a two, with a, such a clarity and then I kind of manip manipulated it and then blur it out and then put it back in. So, so um, this is actually um, the photograph, the roof, the, the actual photograph inside is, is covered and then the, the thing left is the, is the blur image. So I kind of got rid of it for myself. And then 
this is the um, a figure of my mother in the in my grandma's place. I think it's it's a good rep representation of her status in the, the family crisis. And then the second one is the window view, which a uh, skyscraper is reflecting some sunlight into my house, which um, we moved back to. And then um, it's a new observation of that place, and I kind of um, readapt, and then it's like a whole whole new whole new place to live in for myself emotionally and also physically. And this is a, a poster about the exhibition. And here's a photo of the setup. And that's it. <laughs> oh, amazing. Okay, brilliant. Um, Thank you. Well, so it's really great hearing about your work. Uh, I'm just trying to see if I can make this any bigger, but, um, but this is fine. Um, <laughs> you talk about your work in such, like a, you really share the details and really like that really opens up the narrative about each image, which is so mm -hmm. interesting, especially with, I mean, um, you know, we hear how the Hong Kong protests are reported. Um, mm -hmm. But I think when I first heard you talk about your work, it was, it completely changed my perception of the feeling of the protest. <sighs> Mm -hmm. and especially how you, you know, I, I didn't know about, um, I knew about when the um, airport was uh, kind of like flooded with protesters. Um, yeah, yeah. But I didn't, know, I didn't know that story about how when they left and about how they were kind of saved by kind of um, yeah. people who wanted, to, you know, to support and help. So uh -huh. the details in your work are really fascinating to hear about. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess one thing I wanted to talk to you about, about um, Glory 503, was mm -hmm. um, kind of how you described it as a safe way to approach the subject by kind of yeah. using these domestic items um, and then construct can kind of constructing kind of common scenes from the protests, but in a in a different kind of way. Um, you you mm -hmm. said you have to kind of face and confront the police in these images yeah. in these images, which yeah. you know from how it's reported looks just terrifying. Yeah. Um, um, so I guess I kind of, I kind of wondered how did you get to this place where you thought that, you know when did you start kind of like building these ideas that this is how you're going to reflect on the protests you know mm. <laughs> someone like me I wouldn't think to do this so it's just <laughs> this process <laughs> I think um, I think it's uh, when I I decided not to take photographs of the re real thing and. Um, also, even if the people on the streets are willing to let me take photographs, I, I don't want to like just click and then talk, talk their, maybe they, they were suffering or they were doing something and then I just took their image and, and, and it, it belongs to me. I, I don't want to do that. So I kind of started with an idea of how can I um, present all this without using some actually actual people <laughs> so um the third the first image actually is um indeed the rat police and I, I i i was inspired by the the reflective material which they used to cover the, their faces and i saw i saw the 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 light dome which i i use all the time for my flashlight where, while i take photographs and i i realized oh it looks exactly the same <laughs> Uh, with the with with the, the helmet with that with the reflective material, so I just kind of tested, tried to photograph it, and and it turns out really, I I would say it works. <laughs> so yeah, that's how it started, and then I tried to um, maybe I can try the baton or tear gas, and then that's how it it happened. <laughs> um, I feel like with because kind of when you talk about how you know it was you used a chopstick like and yeah. <laughs> or even how when you constructed the um, police siren how you used um, kind mm -hmm. of you know an old like it was an old toilet roll holder and you kind of made this yeah. like yeah. there's there's such um, you know there's such domestic normal items <laughs> actually they they're, they're in the in reality of the protest that that's you know when they're real like things not just fiction they yeah, yeah, yeah. they they have a complete different meaning um so yeah. i guess you know for the the i think like the um 
tear gas image in particular like yeah. i just wondered if you could like talk how you created this image how you set it up the staging um this is i think this is the most difficult one <laughs> <laughs> so um i kind of it's it's kind of a a multi exposure image so i some of them is um like extreme close up of the cotton so i kind of um pull, pull the cotton balls the, the the cosmetic cotton balls apart and then they start to to turn really thin and then it looks like smoke <laughs> and gas so i kind of um took different angles and then close ups of the cotton balls and and uh, form this this image so um but the cotton is exceptionally hard to control so i I would use a lot of toothpick and then, and to, toothpicks uh, um um the wooden wooden stakes and um to to hold them and then to to model them so yeah it's kind of it really is an interesting one yeah it's yeah I mean I feel like for me that image is yeah it's like a painting it doesn't even have resemblance <laughs> anymore and i know you you originally studied painting didn't you so yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like i majored in painting originally yeah. <laughs> um okay so i'll just because we're, we're drawn up we're a bit short on time so i just wanted to ask um mm. so obviously kind of you also discussed this um body of work about being at home and i'm talking to you during yeah. um, a global quarantine mm -hmm. you know, mostly global um and I, I think we've all been kind of reflecting on kind of on our home on our kind of domestic yeah life um and our personal connections to people um as we have been a bit removed from them yeah, um, yeah. so it was really great to hear you talk about those works that are so sensitively done um and yeah i think when you talk about the kind of process of printing the images in the dark room and kind of repeatedly mm -hmm. seeing the image and that kind yeah, of yeah. exposure to it um it's kind of like you know almost like it reminds me of kind of this um what we're having every day of kind of waking up <laughs> <in the> environment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so you have to really work through it, whatever you're feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I want to just kind of um, look towards the future. And I guess because in Hong Kong now, I'm I'm correct in thinking that they um, the um, restrictions have kind of lowered a bit, and so perhaps yeah, yeah. there'll be kind of a new wave of people protesters coming back out. Yeah. Um, you know, after like a. A break and, and what was a, mm -hmm. what must have been a very exhausting but um probably quite powerful year um for yeah. those that came together so i guess i mean do you think that you'll kind of continue this series of work or i mean um what are your feelings kind of towards life after lockdown with the kind of protests coming if you don't mind sharing <laughs> yeah sure sure um i'm not sure i'm gonna continue with the with the, with the working on the protests but, but I, I guess you never know because things happen um unpredictably mm -hmm. so but um for myself i i kind of um i wanted to work on the relationship between our environment and the nature and us um especially it's a it's an idea came up during the the pandemic <laughs> and i think it's interesting how how earth find a way to recover without <laughs> so many humans all over the places yeah. and i think the relationship with, between um maybe especially in hong kong between the the nature and 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 humans are interesting because i realized many of the trees and plants in hong kong it's about the urban planning they are not supposed to be there and obviously it's not their natural habitat mm -hmm. and many of the trees that the roots then grow as deep as they need it and then they just collapse when typhoon typhoon comes mm -hmm. and i think it's it's kind of an interesting thing for me and i i'm kind of um working on it for now so i'm not sure about the protest but who knows <laughs> yeah well, yeah that sounds, that sounds like an interesting direction um yeah i think yeah i think as well like even within here in the uk it's different but kind of nature has been so forever present kind of in everyone's mind it's something which is yeah very, a bit of a restorative of a approach yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but okay well that's great thank you so much for thank you for having me yeah my pleasure
Okay, um, and um, if you want to see more of Caleb's work, just either look at the format Instagram takeover or his um, his Instagram page <laughs> um, <laughs> see more of what he's working on. So thank you very yeah. much. Okay. Thank you, Laura. Bye. Bye.